All right. Good afternoon. We have our business community here. We're watching uh, live on Facebook and also those that are participating in our webinar uh, using Zoom. So a little bit of housekeeping before we get into this. Um, I know we've been doing Zoom for 11 plus months now, but this may be your first Zoom. So if you down at the bottom of your screen, you have a couple of options and you're saying, okay, I can't see my picture. This is a webinar versus a meeting format. So it's not that we don't wanna see you, but it just allows a little bit more control and gives a better um, experience once this is recorded. But we definitely wanna get your feedback and your questions. And we wanna make sure that we uh, provide you the best experience today. So you do have the ability to use the Q and A function where you can ask questions there. The answer may come live during the conversation or the um, answer may come uh, being typed into the Q&A box. You can also use the chat function as well. And we'll go ahead and see that. And if you really want, you can raise your hand and we can bring you on live audio and you can ask your questions by voice. So uh, please do use uh, one of those options because this is going to be interactive and we want to make this more about how to help businesses. There's definitely a lot of needs right now in the business community and specifically we're talking about a business watch, which traditionally was an opportunity for businesses to come and vent, share their frustrations. The police department says what they can do. And then we go back to our businesses, but we are redoing the business watch format here in Pittsburgh. And we're really thankful to have a very supportive police department that is not only excited to work along with us in this new format, but is doing a lot to help the business community. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, like I said, my name is Wolfgang Krosky, CEO, CEO of the Pittsburgh Chamber of Commerce. And we have with us today, Lieutenant Deplich with for the Pittsburgh Police Department and uh, Tony Baldazzo, who is their uh, social media PR behind the scenes. Uh, she does a lot and we'll give each of them an opportunity to introduce themselves uh, in a little bit. But this new format for Business Watch, what does it look like? So you'll notice today is the third Tuesday of January you can go ahead and block out the third Tuesday of every month. We are gonna make that the day that we have our business watch meeting. We're also gonna keep these virtual, even if we are able to go back to face-to-face -face one, because we can record these and we are building a website specifically for the business watch program. So you can go back and watch meetings that you may have missed because we all know we're busy, right? Who has time to take out of their day for uh, meeting. You may not, so you can go and record these, where if we had live face-to-face, -face, that wasn't um, done in the past. So that's one improvement that we're doing based on feedback, so it's more accessible to our business community. We're also going to have on that site resources that are specific to what the content that was discussed that day, so that you can uh, learn more, share more, and then we also are going to have the ability for you to submit what are those topics that are most important to you? So that we can then relay that to the police department. They can talk on the subject or they might be able to bring in an expert or whatever to best address that. So we're really excited about this new format and we feel that it's going to make a business watch in Pittsburgh stronger, more accessible, and it's adaptive to the times that we now live in because let's face it, it is hard being a business owner I'm sure you may have watched the news uh, this past weekend about an incident on railroad where windows were smashed out. And uh, that's actually what kind of was the impetus for changing our format and for the content today. So with that, I'd like to go ahead and turn it over to Lieutenant Deplich and uh, Tony Baldazzo to both introduce themselves and kind of what their role is with the Business Watch program. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Wolf. Um, go ahead. Tony, would you like to go? Um, just real quick, my name is Adam Deplich. Um, I'm a lieutenant here at the Pittsburgh Police Department. I've worked at the police department for the past 24 years. Um, I'm currently assigned to uh, Lieutenant Investigations Division. Um, and I was asked to attend this meeting 
just to uh, briefly shed some light on some of the challenges that uh, law enforcement, specifically our police department, has been facing due to the, uh, the most recent uh, COVID restrictions. And also, at the end of that, I'd be happy to answer some questions that, that pertain to that. Thanks. Good afternoon. My name is Tony Baldazzo. I am the Community Outreach Coordinator for the Pittsburgh Police Department. I've been here with the agency 20 years, and my assigned duty is to coordinate meetings like this for the business community and also for um, Neighborhood Watch. Um, that's one of my tasks. And then social media, like Wolf um, explained earlier. Um, and so I'm happy to be here and to answer any questions uh, via social media or if you would like to reach out um, to our main line or email. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you. So a little bit about what uh, the chamber, some of the feedback that we're getting and, you know, why we wanted to have this meeting today is that the particular incident that took place on railroad started with uh, somebody who was contacted by the police department and they had a warrant. And if I'm making any errors here, please correct me, but they had a warrant due and due to the current restrictions, the person was uh, uh, not taken into county jail like most people think will happen when somebody's quote unquote arrested. Later on, then came back to the property and smashed out over $10,000 worth of glass and you know other damages that were caused. And because of that was then, as most people say, was arrested and then taken to county jail and then later was actually released. And people on social media and business owners uh, have shared frustrations because it's like, well, why didn't the PD take them in the first time? Is, they didn't want to do the paperwork or, you know, what's up with that? That could have saved, you know, a lot of frustration and time. Uh, you know, th that's not right. And then, okay, the second time they had to take him in because he actually caused all this damage. So I guess the first question I'm going to start with is with COVID, what can and can't be done when it comes to people um, causing damages to businesses or shoplifting or just those those types of quality of life crimes that business owners may be faced with right now or that are taking place on their property, not that the business owners committing the crime. No, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. What, what I can say is that uh, our officers are still conducting business as usual, the same exact way that they were prior to the pandemic. Um, as far as seeking out criminal uh, conduct, criminal behavior that affects uh, quality of life during the business here in Pittsburgh. The only thing, the challenges that we're facing due to the COVID restrictions are there certain offenses that typically would, um, if they were committed here in our city, it would typically be an offense such as the incident that happened over the weekend, which was a, uh, a uh, misdemeanor warrant. That would typically be an incident where someone would be put at our facility and then taken over to the Martinez County Jail. Due to the restrictions, though, we can no longer do that. Uh, the restrictions that we are abiding by now are ones where the uh, county jail will accept uh, in custody if they're not of a violent felony nature, which the, the first uh, warrant well, that would be applicable. So those are, the, those are the challenges that we're facing, and we're certainly sympathetic to the, the uh, challenges that the, the business are facing and the community. But just to clarify some of this is our officers are still going out, they're still making the arrest, they're still enforcing all the same uh, field codes, penal codes, everything that we did prior to the, uh, the pandemic. The issue is, is once we make the arrest, if it is not a violent felony, that person will be site released in the field. Um, and that's that's where the challenge is coming to place. Uh, so there's not there's no misconception misconception. There's not uh, that they're not being arrested. It's not that they're a a case isn't being documented and brought to the district attorney's office. It is. It's just that the initial contact where typically that person would go to jail behind it. Uh, if it's not a, a felony and the violent nature like I said, that person is at least in the field. And then unfortunately they're backed out in the public and um, worst case scenario is the 
prime example is what happened this past weekend. So for those that aren't really familiar, because um, you know, all, all crimes for for law abiding citizens are egregious, right? Like how could somebody do that? But we know in the criminal world that there's a wide spectrum of things that people can do. What exactly is considered a violent felony opposed to uh, some other, give us a couple of examples so we know exactly like what is a threshold that has to be sure. committed to get actually taken to county jail? So a, any you know, domestic violence related crime will, be, will go to county jail. Um, if there's, a, when I say serious violent felony, if you have any felony crimes that uh, were weapons used, you know, such as any type of a, an felony assault or a robbery, um, that would be applicable if someone to go to county jail. If someone is to uh, vandalize a car or um, break into um, someone's vacant building, those are certain types of crimes. Um, there are more of the following five crimes where you would, at this stage, you would not be going down to jail under those circumstances. Okay, so uh, um, somebody breaks into the building and doesn't do anything crazy egregious. They, If they were caught, they would, what I believe what you would call is a site release, basically, given uh, whatever citation or whatever, and then given a court date to appear sometime in the future and then kind of sent on their way. That's correct? Yes, it would be it would be an incident where uh, just that's the most of was to break into a, a, a vacant warehouse, for instance, and they were caught. Um, it's not considered a, 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 to be a violent felony. They would a criminal case would be documented. It would be site released. That case would then be brought over to the district attorney's office for uh, formal charges. Um, but after the initial onset, that uh, with the restrictions in place, the Martinez County Jail will not accept them. Yeah, that's uh, obviously yeah, that's, uh, I think frustrating for everybody that's you know involved with with this. So, what what can a business owner do right now, or a property owner? Because we do have on the the webinar today, we do have uh, some landlords, you know, and they they're dealing with. Uh, some other issues which we're going to bring up in regards to, you know, homeless, but in, it almost seems like what's, why should I even call the police to come if all they're going to do is give them a site release? Like, should I still call and report this or, you know, what, what should I do as a business owner, as a landlord, when either uh, somebody breaks in or I caught them doing vandalism or shoplifting, for example? Uh, well, certainly, I, I don't want to discourage anyone from not calling the police. If there's any incident that happens, they should certainly call the police and let um, the police department make the decision and Martinez uh, County Jail make the decision whether this person ends up going to jail from the, from the initial contact. But definitely, they still need to call us um, to let us know a criminal case will still be documented, will still be for the, the district attorney's office be reviewed and uh, and most importantly it's we don't want um, like I said for the businesses to be discouraged certainly I understand how frustrating this is I think it's frustrating on every end and we certainly are sympathetic to that but we are we're still handling our business we're still doing exactly what um, the community's asked of us we're still doing the police work the same that we did like I said prior to COVID it's just the those certain um, procedures that take place after an arrest is made, that's what the changes come into place. But definitely, I would not uh, let us make that determination in county jail, not uh, certainly not someone who's being victimized. Yeah, okay. But, I just uh, want to bring that up because I know sometimes people feel like, well, what's the point? You know, uh, I'm, I'm only calling so I can get a case number for insurance or, you know, that. And uh, I know because I've uh, done some volunteer work with the police department that those case the calls that come in help the department know where to uh you know put officers or different assets and that that data is really important in determining you know how many officers on a watch and you know all, all the 
things that you do in the police department. So I wanted to make sure that people still call in, even if they feel like, what's the point? There is a point and it, it needs to, uh, needs to be done. So uh, thank you for, for covering that. Uh, so let's, let's talk about the, the big one, uh, homeless. What, uh, how is COVID impact how um, those unhoused residents are uh, addressed or, you know, dealt with in, in the community or what resources are available to them and what resources are available to property owners that are dealing with uh, this on a, a daily basis? Um, yes, absolutely. We, we have, first of all, we have a, a homeless outreach team at the police department that is directly assigned to deal with the homeless uh, issues in our city. And they, they currently work with the core county team to uh, get uh, resources uh, out to these individuals. And that's, so like I said, our team is specifically focused on these issues. Um, again, like some of the other restrictions that come into place because of COVID. Some of these are also applicable to uh, to our homeless issue, um, and probably the most uh, common and, and frequent issue that we're seeing is that typically when uh, prior to COVID, if there were certain like homeless encampments um, that were seen, they could the city could intervene, and uh, there were some procedures in place to remove some of these people into different, different to get them resources and, and bring in a different housing facility. Since COVID, you're no longer allowed to do that. You're not allowed to displace them, um, which is why I think you, it's more, you're seeing these uh, encampments that are more frequently. Um, so that's where our uh, frustrations and our challenges are, are coming into play right now. Um, but they are being addressed. We are working the county. We are doing everything we can to get resources out to, out, uh, to these individuals. It's just a little more challenging as far as getting these um, sites removed from, from where, uh, where where people are seeing them and making complaints about them. Are there, so it sounds like a lot of the, the restrictions that are being placed on the police department are coming from either, you know, county or state mandates because of COVID. Is there... Um, and not trying to put you on the spot, but I mean, is there something that business owners can do to help maybe advocate for their needs and maybe uh, in the conversations when these policies are made or, uh, you know, it, it just, we, we don't want to feel, you know, helpless and like, you know, there's just nothing we can do. I mean, is there, are you aware of any uh, forums or ways then which, the business community can voice their needs when it comes time to policy making. Right. I, well, sir, I would encourage them to voice their needs and their frustrations uh, to the police department, and then we can we can take it from there. So I would say the the by most uh, convenient way for them would be to to reach out to our uh, our uh, homeless outreach team, which we have a lieutenant that oversees that team as well. He can probably speak on this um, a little better than I can, and he can address some of these topics on a, on a further date. But uh, certainly from the onset, let, let us know at the police department, and uh, we will address um, the issue as we can, and then all that information gets forwarded out to the, the local and state levels. Okay. Awesome. Um, Tony, in regards to like the social media and the, the PR part that you play with the police department, are there uh, communication tools that maybe the business community needs to connect with to stay informed on uh, items or, you know, how, how would be a good way for, since you're kind of over the business watch for the business community to, to stay in the loop and to um, exchange information that's not necessarily, you know, making a call to dispatch, but more casual. Um, that's a great question. Um, the reason why you were able to see that channel two posting, it, it was an initial post on our Facebook and on our social media um, that I had posted and um, explaining and educating our to our community, letting them know that um, it doesn't stop with us 
um, because of COVID restrictions and state mandates, we weren't able to arrest that individually, the individual initially. And so through our social media, I would say you could contact me um, through private messaging. If you have any concerns, if it's not an emergency, then yes, you could um, send me a message directly um, via Instagram, Nextdoor, Facebook, or Twitter. Um, I receive all the messages and that's another way we could connect if you are, if it's not an emergency. Mm -hmm. And I know you and I have talked in regards to revamping this business watch. One piece that we're going to do is for those that don't follow the Pittsburgh Police Department already on social media, uh, to let you know, they do like these traffic Tuesdays and different things like that, that we're going to uh, work on incorporating kind of a, uh, business watch component where you know sharing tips best practices and um kind of lessons learned so that businesses can stay up to date on either you know changes to policies or hey we're seeing this pattern take place but uh you know just as another way to communicate to the business community so that we can stay proactive in trying to uh you know as we all try to address some of these issues Yes, I agree. So let's there's we have a couple of questions that have come in. Um, the first one and so far, thank you so much for sharing everything. I, I wanted to make sure that people kind of understood the changes that take have taken place because of COVID and that police work has not stopped. It's just the we'll say the prosecution side is uh, a little different. And so, um, I, you know, letting people know about that, that you're not just contacting individuals and then well eh, because of COVID it's one extra form so let's just release them but that's definitely not the case that you know the officers are still doing everything that they're supposed to but um, some of the the questions that have, the first one is people are noticing uh, this is specific to the parking lot on 16th and railroad that there's quote-unquote questionable exchanges that there seems to be um, activity at that parking lot. So again, should it be a call to dispatch or is there maybe a way for uh, the business community to provide tips on hot spots that, you know, they're noticing or what are, what's your recommendation? Um, first and foremost, they see if anyone sees anything that's out of sorts or suspicious or of criminal nature that uh, I would ask that they notify through our dispatch um, as soon as they can and then let our, our uh, officers address it. Whether it's something that they may think is not significant or maybe they don't think that um, the police are going to contact these individuals, they still uh, ask, they still notify the police department again through our, through our dispatch center and we can get an officer out there to check in on it. Um, and that's the most efficient way to get that, something like that addressed. Okay, awesome. So uh, we'll we'll make sure that, you know, because sometimes people let the chamber know, hey, this spot over here seems to have a lot of activity or, you know, things that we will, one, encourage people to call dispatch, but then also as a chamber, we'll um, relay that as well. So it sounds like that parking lot, it's the one, um, Right across from John Buckley Square, I think, is at Six and Railroad, and I yeah. uh, at that. The next question uh, is, and I know that this has been talked about before, but cars parked for days in the two-hour parking zones along Railroad. What um, what are the options there, and uh, any any advice or insight or? First, let me yeah just. Back uh, up. Lieutenant, I just want to mention something real quick too. Um, so we did have, we do have a full-time person, uh, parking enforcement um, staff member. Um, however, when she did go down and um, regulate um, the and enforce the two-hour parking, it happened to be the business owners that were parking in those parking um, spaces, and they were getting the tickets without the knowledge of the staff member. Um, and then trying to fight the tickets. So um, 
I would suggest tread lightly on that. If you want the enforcement, we could send our staff out there. However, you want to make sure that it's not the business owners are not park, parking in those areas also because they're not, um, they have the same, the same rules apply to them. I don't know if you want to mention anything else in that, uh, Lieutenant. Yeah, I was just echoing with uh, what you said that uh, the same rules apply. But just to, to back up to um, what we were talking about before is uh, as far as how people are reporting uh, criminal activity or what they may think is somewhat unusual. Um, I think what a, a lot of people have done in the past is they'll report these incidents through um, next door or other social media um, sites, whether they send us some information on uh, Facebook um, or Instagram or like I said, next door. And um, that was not, uh, we'd ask you don't do it that way because it's not um, immediately uh, addressed. The, the quickest way and the most efficient way where these problems are addressed immediately is through our dispatch. And I think that's where some of these. Um, some of these incidents that happen, people get frustrated, and we certainly understand that, but they're not being addressed immediately. It's simply because these they get uh, reported through these certain social media websites, and we don't get that information right away. So um, the follow-up to that is it somebody put in the chat box that these are, you know, cars with with, with expired plates, missing plates, you know, et cetera. So, I think one thing when you're calling in uh, a car, for example, to dispatch, the more detail information you can provide, the better. You know, obviously make, model, color. Um, if there is a plate, giving the, the plate number definitely helps uh, with, you know, trying to locate. And uh, obviously, you know, let Lieutenant Deplich respond to this. There's, there's a priority in calls, right? So if there's a high priority call going on and you call in about uh, a car or loitering, for example, it may take a little bit of time uh, to get there, but at least when you provide the color, make, model, and uh, license plate, that information can be relayed. And when uh, somebody is able to and in the neighborhood, they can be on the lookout for that. Is that correct, Lieutenant? Yes, obviously the more information is provided the better. Um, and just to briefly touch on how calls are, are dispatched to our officers, once an, an incident is reported, um, depending on the seriousness of the incident, these calls go to our dispatch center in Martinez, where they are prioritized uh, from a one to a three, one being the most serious. That's how these calls get dispatched out to our officers. So it doesn't that mean that these, whatever the reporting does not we don't take it seriously, we do. It's just that they, we are actually might have done something more, uh, whether it could be a violent crime being committed or something of a more serious nature, they might have to address our resources to that first. But um, like I said before, I, I don't want to discourage anyone from not reporting something that might seem as minor as a parking violation. They, they will be addressed from the onset from probably a patrol officer, but it becomes a, an issue down the road that information, like, like Tony mentioned, we have a, a full-time park enforcement officer. That information will then get relayed to her, and she can start um, allocating some of her resources and directing her enforcement to some of these specific areas. Okay, awesome. Uh, next, we have uh, Mr. Bob Berger. I'm going to bring him on. He has a question that he would like to He raise his hand. So uh, if he can go ahead and unmute, and the floor is now yours, Mr. Berger. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I appreciate it. And I also appreciate uh, you starting the Business Watch program. Um, I have a center, the Pittsburgh Town Center on Railroad. And um, I, I also want to thank the police because whenever any of my tenants call, we always get a response. It's not as, it's not as um, immediate as anyone would like because it's such a dynamic kind of thing. They call regarding a uh, you know homeless person um, um, uh, harassing tenants, um, 
you know, bothering the women uh, for spare change, etc. And by the time they get there, um, uh, they seem to have left. But I just want to thank the police for what they do. Question I have is, uh, number one, um, is the police department at this point at full complement in terms of manpower? That's number one. Number two, um, I don't believe the social media uh, is getting down deep enough into the tenant community. And I'm not sure how that works because, you know, I have uh, uh, um, I have um, small restaurants and they don't know how to use a computer. They don't know basically how to, uh, you know, uh, uh, come up with certain ideas that may be helpful. And so it, uh, it goes, you know, and they don't tell me, it just goes uh, unnoticed and, and goes uh, undone. So if there's a way that we can get to the smaller tenants, especially the restaurant tenants that are having a hell of a time making ends meet right now, uh, and are still open. I have a couple of stores that have been closed for over two months. Uh, the nail salon and the barber shop. Uh, you know, these kind of people uh, really like to know that the city of Pittsburgh, the Chamber of Commerce, and also the police department are watching out for their welfare just by, you know, for nothing more than encouragement, if you would. So uh, that's kind of a long-winded before I get to my question. Uh, I just want to know, uh, in terms of the police department, do uh, is it uh, an opportunity to be more visible uh, by running through centers, uh, both mine and Atlantic Plaza and Sino's properties, et cetera, uh, based on the factor that uh, you sometimes deterrent uh, from homeless uh, drinking alcohol and doing uh, damage uh, just by seeing a police car and I also have a security service, but, but just say, seeing a, a Pittsburgh police car driving through, in my experience, they have seen to be a little bit more respectful. The other question that I have, and I, you know, I, I can't get a straight answer on this, is that uh, I have a bus stop on my property, and there's another bus stop across the street. I put that bus stop in when I did some remodeling on the property. And it, it's also become a haven, if you would, for uh, homeless people to gather, to gather to do drugs, to gather to do um, uh, alcohol. And I'm just wondering, why is that off limits? Uh, someone comes by and they say, well, we're waiting for a bus, which is a standard operating procedure and I'm just wondering if there's any way that we can look at that and try to correct that situation. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just to answer your question as far as addressing some of these these issues in, in your parking lots that, uh, yes, for us, us doing that, uh, we can uh, spend more time and, and dedicate more resources if you're having some problems in some of these specific locations. and. I can certainly um, reach out to you after after this meeting is over. Get some more in specifics on that. But uh, to answer your question, yes, we can. As far as uh, the park bench or the uh, uh, bus stop, um, again, I'm not sure which one specific one you're referring to. But if there's certainly illegal activity occurring at these locations, then definitely let us know, and and it, and it will be addressed. Good. The situation, this, this situation is, is that, uh, can you hear me? Okay. The, situ the situation is, is that as soon as the police car patrol is, is seen um, and uh, the, the illegal paraphernalia is put away and they say we're at the bus stop waiting for the bus. Now, if I was to return in two hours, they're still waiting for the bus. So, uh, and, and I've talked to my security service about that and uh, we can't run them off uh, because, uh, you know, they're waiting for the bus. I, it's, just, it's just not right. It's not only uh, on, uh, you know, uh, and I talked to the, uh, the, the uh, bus people too, and they have, they say they have many problems 
with their bus stops being uh, used as meeting and gathering places um, kind of thing. Um, you know, that, that's, um, that's just uh, 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 an, an area where I wish we could talk about and, and, and have some solution and maybe get some, uh, you know, uh, chamber people involved, uh, uh, um, council people involved to see basically what could, what could be, because I think uh, I, I was ready to take the bus stop away, you know, uh, personally, uh, other than it's a convenience for a lot of people. But uh, it, it's really an issue that I have a big problem. And I'm talking to uh, uh, Bob from Sino, and it's the same thing across the street. However, he doesn't have, he's lucky. He doesn't have a, 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 um, a shade on his. I do. So uh, that causes me more problems. So it's just, uh, it's, a, it's a subtle, but a real issue. And uh, Mr. Berger, I definitely hear you when you, uh, in regards to the chamber, you know, what can the chamber do? And so one thing that we want to do with these business watches is obviously the, we all know that we have a great police department and they're working effortlessly to, or tirelessly to, um, to help, but they can only do so much. So as a business community, how can we mobilize to have our voice heard and so we're going to, through these um, monthly meetings, you know, help organize and work together on how we can advocate and elevate our voice to council, county, you know, state. One of, one of the things which this doesn't apply to the business watch, but the moratoriums and how landlords are being treated right now, that's another area that we uh, need to elevate our voice and to, you know, advocate, but that We'll save that for a, a different Zoom meeting, but I, I I think that that's you've brought out some great ideas. And as businesses, we need to work together and to to advocate to these policymakers about you know some of these issues because uh, police provide you know the enforcement, and we need actual changes in law so that we can um, you know have a community where everybody feels uh, safe. You know, absolutely. So I appreciate your well, can, your great questions. Can I just say one more thing, and then I'll sure, turn it back to you. Uh, I um, this incident that took place on Railroad Avenue about breaking windows. This should be an example. We should set mm -hmm. this as an example uh, that this individual is 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 not just going to be slapped on the wrist and put back out again. Because I want to tell you, it's like graffiti. If, uh, if you allow it to happen and you don't uh, go out and, and, and cover it up, if you don't take strong measures, it's a free pass for people to feel that are going to do damage that, okay, I broke these windows. It cost $10,000. I don't give a damn. The insurance company is going to pay it anyway to go out and break some more windows. And the only way the word's going to get around is that if we're strong and we're active and we try to do uh, as much as we can to get the word out, and I guess this could be the chamber, get the word out that if you break windows, if you graffiti property in the city of Pittsburgh, we're going to do all we can uh, to make sure uh, that uh, you're going to be reprimanded for it and not just slapped on the wrist. So I think that's really important. If we let these... Uh, um, you know, crimes uh, get, get away and uh, just uh, not do as much as we can from a chamber standpoint and, and with the cooperation of the police department, it's going to be more. It could walk down on railroad and break all the windows in Walgreens. Then what? Uh, or break all the windows in the, in the supermarket. Then what? You know, the tenant's going to get very, very upset and you could lose a major tenant over that because one of the biggest things that tenants move out especially major tenants, in my experience, is one, merchandise doesn't stay on the shelf because it's shoplifted, or number two, damage to the property. So it, that's a very important point, and I think we need to move forward on looking at that and making sure that uh, hopefully this was one incident and we don't find, and we don't wake up next week and find out that uh, another person who was 
arrested and then let go for whatever reason goes out and does a considerable damage. It's, it's, uh, it's very important. I uh, 100% agree. And I think that there's a way for us to, um, to work together as business owners with our policymakers. And again, uh, you know, advocate and try to get policies and things in place to, to kind of make, you know, some of this happen. So thank you very much for uh, sharing that, Mr. Berger. We do have, um, she actually had to leave, but she put a question in the chat. It's how do we find out who our beat officer is uh, someone who may be familiar with the crime and calls that are being addressed around our businesses. Oftentimes there is police activity outside our business, but we're not informed as to what's going on. Thanks. Just to answer that, um, sir, they can, they can contact the, the police department and, uh, we will. We can set up uh, through Tony. We can set up um, a meeting if they wanted to meet the to be the officer. But depending on what uh, time of the day and what uh, day during the week it is, um, there's we have uh, our shifts are Monday through Thursday with a day shift, swing shift, and graveyard shift, and then uh, on the weekend crews uh, the same. So it just depends on um, really what what day it is and what what time of day. So there's there's several officers. I guess the best answer is that. Uh, are the beat officers. Um, but certainly if uh, uh, the gal who, who had the question, if she wanted to reach out to, to tell me and, and uh, as far as getting in contact with one of our beat officers, that she can definitely take care of that. Awesome. Um, another resource that the police department does have is an officer that does patrol the shopping centers and her name is Officer Towner. And she's in Bob's area. Um, in Atlanta Plaza um, during the daytime usually. Um, but if you have any other questions in regards to the business watch, or if you wanna send me a message, um, I'll make sure that uh, Wolfgang does have my um, email and uh, cell phone information. And I'll be happy to answer any questions or put you in the path of whoever needs to help. One idea, and I'm just throwing this out here, uh, PD, definitely, this is the first time you're going to hear it, but I was thinking maybe there's a way that, you know, at shift change, for example, Tony gathers the list of, you know, we know where our commercial centers are in our business districts and what beat they are in, that at shift change, that, you know, she emails the chamber and then we can kind of spread it out like, you know, here are the officers that cover you know, these areas and this is their shift so that we at least, you know, uh, businesses may know who uh, they are. And it doesn't always mean that that will be the responding officer, but at least it can help go towards, you know, strengthening that relationship between the business community and the, the police department. So maybe that's something that we could talk about later and see if that's, you know, feasible or, you know, we don't want to create burden, but that might, uh, that might help as well. Um, so, uh, uh, Bob Garrison put a, a, a comment in there about Officer Towner and assignment that it's just for that property or their property. So I just wanted to, he wanted to clarify that, I guess. Um, okay, Whatever, so he, we have- He's right, he's right that it, yeah. he, she is hired for a specific property that, that helps pay some of that salary, um, but she is to patrol all areas. It's not specifically that specific shopping center. So she's not going to look the other way if something is happening on across the street. So let's make that sure. clear also. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, oh, that's on the left side. I don't do that. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with that. Okay, so we have, uh, uh, next we have Carol Isbell, who is uh, at Acorn uh, Storage. If you can go ahead and unmute Carol and the mic is yours. Okay. I just I just wanted to say just real quickly that um, I think it's unfair to ask the police to totally regulate what human beings do. I mean, they, they're, they're restricted just like we are. 
Um, but I think it's a great idea as a community, as a community of businesses, that we all communicate with each other and warn each other when we've had an issue at a property or something's going on, you notice some weird behavior, because then we can kind of get in front of it before it becomes a big issue. Anyway, that's what I wanted to say. Okay, thank well, you. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> Are there any other uh, questions from our group? You can put them in the Q&A box or you can uh, raise your hand. Uh, let's see, we got Bob Garrison. Go ahead and unmute. Bob, you there? Oh, sorry, can you hear me? Yep, go for it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just, um, I agree with, with what Wolf said about pressuring policymakers. You know, I, I recognize that the police can only do so much, but, um, you know, the, the incident on railroad, that, that individual has hit um, multiple centers that we manage. Um, and then just yesterday, we had another window broken out at, a, at the Oak Hill Shopping Center in the middle of the day. Um, so it's a, it's a problem that, you know, it's, it's demoralizing to these tenants who are trying to, you know, just make ends meet during this COVID, um, lockdown and, you know, to come to your business with a, a busted out window, which costs, you know, thousands of dollars to replace, uh, depending on the size is just, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's not fair to these uh, to these business owners that they have to put up with this, and so whatever we can do to to pressure policymakers at a local level to start taking these issues seriously, the the quality of life crimes that are being ignored by um, government, especially in the state of California, it's it's ruining the business climate here, in my opinion, and. We're going to see uh, a lot more businesses close and leave the area unless this can get um, under control. That's just my two cents. Thanks. Thank you, Bob, uh, for sharing that. I think something that's going to come from this meeting is uh, as businesses, you know, and the chamber can help facilitate that having uh, sessions with directly with policymakers so that we can elevate that conversation. So we're going to go ahead and start organizing that so that um, those can take place. Cause that, that ultimately is where the rubber hits the road because um, just, that's where it is. So uh, thank you for sharing that. Any other uh, questions or comments that would we'll need to be made? Jeremy. Uh, let's see, Carol, your hand is raised again. Go ahead and unmute. Carol, did you want to talk again? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Th there you I go. Thought I was. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I'll, I what I wanted to say was um, I I did also agree that we should talk to the policymakers, and that I I didn't mean to infer that the damage that was done to those buildings was not harmful to their businesses, and I worry about it here as well. You know, um, we have. I, I do self storage. So I see people from all different kinds of walks and lives. And we have a lot of people who do weird things on our lot or outside our lot. So, you know, it is really scary. And so I, I just wanted to clarify that I agree. We need to talk to the policymakers to get some rules in place that will kind of help our businesses and support us so that we don't lose our businesses. Thank you. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, there's a um, 
one thing that uh, was brought up to the chamber in regards to uh, kind of vandalism and homeless issue is that uh, public store just had issues with people stealing power and damaging basically the irrigation to get water. Uh, and the, obviously this is happening at night. Is there anything that can be done for them other than basically turning off the irrigation and not having any landscaping? I guess that'd be directed to uh, Lieutenant Deplich or Tony. Um, yeah, 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 but there's, they, these are the exact type of incident that we were talking about earlier. These are uh, things that need to be reported. Um, this is like to do is and direct our resources where they need to go. So these things are happening throughout the night or uh, these guys are getting vandalized or power stolen or whatever it, it may be. Um, it helps us direct where where uh, our resources go, and then we can certainly have a better a better grip on how we handle these things. So that's certainly a thing that need to be reported. Thank you. Um, I don't know which I don't know what public storage you're referring to. I know there was one on California that we just addressed some concerns that she wrote in, um, specifically actually emailed me, and I was able to get those. Um, concerns addressed. There was a lot of old cars that homeless were living out of that we had towed off the property that were in uh, that weren't registered or stolen. There were actually a couple stolen vehicles, so we were able to address it with that public storage. Uh, is it the one you're speaking of on railroad or California? Um, I believe it. Uh, I don't know if Leanne can chime in on whether it was that. It's uh, California. Yes. California, we just addressed um, some of their concerns already. We are uh, working with our homeless team um, to address more. There are some legal legalities there that we can't address right now, um, but we are Due working on it. Due to COVID? <laughs> <laughs> but we are working on it. Yeah, okay. Um, they probably message the chamber at the exact same time. They, I think when people get frustrated, they just message everybody and whoever responds first gets to be the hero. So PD, great job. Uh, okay, so uh, Mr. Berger has his hand raised. Let me, all right, Mr. Berger. Okay. I think, um, Wolf, I think you've, uh, you've heard some really important problems and issues. And I'm just wondering, um, what is the next step here? I, I, I think, uh, you know, uh, with the, what, what Bob Garrison brought up and, uh, you know, we both have security. In fact, we both use uh, the same security service. I had a, an incident and I don't know if he reported the same individual that did a lot of graffiti on the property. Very, very bad graffiti. Um, what is what is your plan now that you've heard this in terms of quality of life issues? I guess that's what it's called. Other than you, somebody with uh, strung out on drugs and alcohol, uh, in terms of raising it to uh, a level that the um, council hears about it, and we we do something about it. Uh, and and I don't know the answer to that. That takes discussion. It takes to make sure that we're not violating any COVID rules or any rules that are uh, for people. But on the other hand, it's very important uh, for my center, which is Pittsburgh Town Center, and also for the other centers uh, that we move in on it and that the, uh, the people that, uh, you know, that are in position at, at council, city council and the mayor and the city manager uh, 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 take this seriously because it is serious and uh, I just uh, wondered what you think your next step will be, be you know before we get off this uh, this call sure so as far as uh, next steps it's twofold so uh, we talked at the beginning about kind of how we're revamping this business watch and trying to make it more um, more of just not like okay, these are issues, and then we come back in a month. These are issues that there, there's action from this. So the, the police department has been a great partner, and they're going to continue, like I said, once a month. We'll have these meetings where we can talk about new issues, but we're actually bringing 
resources from their side, whether it's an officer that uh, can speak directly to the issue or bringing an expert that can share best practices that will keep us informed and allow us to know what we can do as a business community to, you know, help. But then the next part is actually going to be uh, bringing policymakers together and meeting with them directly. And the part that we have to, um, I think in order to be effective, we, we have seen that the business community is under attack, right? The slogan, um, eat the rich, people over profits. Uh, there's, there's a whole slew of these terms that have been used. And yes, I will say that there may be uh, businesses out in the world that could do better in regards to uh, sharing profits or helping people, but we're talking about Pittsburgh. And in Pittsburgh, I have yet to meet any property owner or business that didn't care about humans first. And so we need to make sure that when we advocate that our message isn't just about, I got to protect my checkbook. And I know that nobody on this call has that attitude because I've met all of you. But when policymakers hear that, they tend to um, not pay attention and they go to other, other groups that may either be louder or have more humanistic, um, human-centered issues and they, the attention gets there. So I think we have to show how these quality of life crimes are truly impacting every resident of Pittsburgh's quality of life. It's impacting the ability for the city to even attract a grocery store. It's impacting the ability for vacant spaces to be rented. It's impacting the ability of the city to generate tax dollars to keep itself afloat. Uh, article today just dropped that the city of Martinez may be facing bankruptcy because of an issue uh, that they're now facing. So we need to meet together. Uh, we will organize that and invite all business owners. And we rely on business owners to invite others. But we have to make sure that it doesn't just, which this does not apply to anybody on this call or how this call went, but it's not just a bitch session where everybody vents their frustrations. We grab a donut and then we go back. We have to organize and elevate and do this for the best of all of Pittsburgh. So as a chamber, we are going to organize uh, meetings where we can strategize. We can invite policymakers at the city level, county level, and the state level so that they can hear the issues that we're facing and help them understand how it's going to impact them. I think where businesses have gone awry when they've tried to advocate is that they have threatened, right? Hey, if you don't fix this, don't come knocking on my door campaign time, or uh, we'll leave if you don't do this. Those strategies just don't work. And so it's figuring out what is the best way to approach these policymakers. And the only way that, that we're going to be able to accomplish that is if we all uh, work together and strategize and then work and partner <clears throat> with the policymakers. It's, it can't be us versus them. We have to work together. And I think that this group has that capacity to do that. And so that, that's kind of the next steps that we're going to do. Because okay. I think we're all tired of uh, just meeting and hashing the same ideas and then nothing nothing comes from that so it's we we have to get policymakers uh to us so that we can speak with them um help them see our side and then make uh, explicit requests on what policies could be changed to to help us and the city council their their hands are tied in some things too because it's at a state level or you know county level so uh, it's it's just allowing everybody to see how they can work together because there is space to for everybody and there there are resources. The the biggest issue right now is that the vast majority of people who are unhoused deny services. And I know that sounds crazy. Why would somebody deny services? They do. I've seen it firsthand myself when the core team or the police department offers help like literally hey we can get you into a warm place get you fed and the people say no so what you know what do we do with that so that that's a big big 
problem to address, but we can start with, um, you know, the broken windows and, you know, uh, doing what we can. Is, is, that... it, po is it possible? Mm -hmm. would, you, would you agree uh, to have um, a, um, the mayor or the, a council person on, on one of our sessions? Absolutely. That's actually uh, already uh, those invitations are going to be made and scheduled. That's uh, this business watch. I don't want to say was thrown together because it was not a lot of planning went into it, but the uh, date we wanted to get one going ASAP because of, you know, what took place. So uh, getting uh, policymakers to this one today was not possible, but absolutely uh, our next one and hopefully we'd like to do one uh, policymaker specific meeting before our next business watch meeting because we can't, we can't wait another month. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, uh, okay, Bob has his hand raised. No, Bob I didn't. Garrison, I should, Bob Garrison, I should say. I uh, would just, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh. Hold on. Yeah, uh, I agree. Um, getting somebody from the council would be great. It, another uh, suggestion would be to try to get somebody from the DA's office uh, to to listen to our concerns. That's uh, from from what I hear. Uh, that that's one of the big roadblocks in terms of getting these crimes to stick. So. Uh, Lieutenant Deplich or Tony, is that something that PD could help us with? Yeah, to ask them, I will, uh, I will reach out to, to uh, the DA's office and just and uh, I'll put them in, in connection with you, with you or Tony for the next, if not the next meeting, the following one, just to see if they can address some of these, uh, these questions and concerns. Thank you. That'd be great. Well, I want to thank everybody for attending. This is, you know, um, it's the start. We have a great business community here in Pittsburgh. And I know that all of us put a lot of time, energy, blood, sweat, and tears into making our businesses the best that they can be because we want to serve our community, right? That's the key to business, find a need and fill it. And we want to do our part and we'll, we'll be able to do that as we work together and want to thank Lieutenant Deplich and Tony Baldazzo for joining us today and being part of, of this team, because that's truly what it's going to take to address these issues. So again, I want to thank everybody, and I want to give Lieutenant Deplich and uh, Tony an opportunity to share any closing comments or uh, any, any parting words before we go ahead and conclude our meeting today. Yeah, just real quick. Um, I just want to uh, express that, uh, like I said initially, that the police department is still handling business, still handling calls for service, still treating crime the same way we did um, and have been doing. Uh, just procedurally things changed a little bit due to the COVID restrictions, but it all, uh, we share the community's frustrations um, and we understand the challenges, but uh, we're, we're working to get through this. I certainly don't want, to, uh, don't want to discourage anyone from notifying the police department of any, anything they see that's unusual or they think that um, they make a call uh, to, to notify us or to dispatch that it's not going to be handled properly. I can assure you that it is. Um, it's just procedurally it's just can't be handled a little bit. More. So with that said, um, uh, thank you very much for the invitation and I uh, look forward to, to uh, address some of these problems in the future. Tony, do you want to, you look like you're reaching for the unmute, but not, oh, should I hit it? Should I not? Go for it. Okay, I got it. I think so. <laughs> um, I just want to thank everyone and thank the Chamber and Wolf uh, for reaching out to the police department to team up for um, 
this business watch meeting and coordinating it and actually making it bigger than what it is. Um, through Zoom, we're able to reach out to all the businesses um, and answer any questions. Like I said, my information is going to be available through the chamber or through Woof. Um, if you have any questions, you're welcome to email me. And like I said, um, direct message me through our social media platforms also. Um, I look forward to working with all the businesses in the community. Um, I do live here in Pittsburgh also, so I am vested and I understand your concerns and I see them um, driving up and down railroad or to the local Target or Walmart. So um, my concerns are your concerns and I look forward to change. Awesome, thank you. So with that, uh, just to let everybody know, I do believe I made an error when I was saying our announcements uh, for the beginning. It is the third Thursday of every month. It's not Tuesday. So we will see everybody um, pulling up the calendar here to give you that exact date so that you can block it out. Uh, it may be in the morning. It may be in the afternoon, depending on who we have uh, joining us, but just so that everybody knows, I would like you to block it on your calendar now because this is this is important. We've heard from a lot of people today that uh, you know have concerns, and the only way that we're going to be able to move the needle is to be systematic about this and working together. So, in the month of February, that would be one, two, three, February the eighteenth. So if everybody can put that on their calendar, February the 18th, we will make sure to send invites again through the Chamber eBlast system and also on our social media page. But plan on February the 18th being the next official Business Watch meeting here in Pittsburgh. And we are going to try to have a separate meeting before then with just policymakers, our city council, so that we can um, bring them into the loop and so that we can all work together in trying to come up with some solutions to some rather complex problems. So with that, I wanna wish everybody a great day. It's Thursday, tomorrow's Friday, and uh, make it a great day and look forward to seeing everybody soon. See you later.